welcome back um, in our previous lecture we discussed about internal diffusion restrictions um, and we assumed uh, the particles to be of spherical geometry and uh, as said earlier in my previous lectures we will be discussing about uh, two types of geometries uh, for internal diffusion restrictions one was one which we have already discussed that is spherical geometry and today we will be discussing about the case of flat geometry this is another important case that is being used uh, for immobilized enzymes and like in the spherical geometry case uh, here also we will perform a shell balance uh, in that case it was a shell balance and in this case we will be assuming a thin slab a thin layer of uh, thickness delta l and uh, we will again assume uniform distribution of the enzyme particle in uh, the, the uniform distribution of the enzymes across the uh, particle the solid support and we will assume isentropic conditions that is all the um, environmental conditions and the physical and chemical conditions across the particle the solid phase is same throughout the whole particle and we will also assume a uniform cross sectional area of the uh, particle across which the diffusion is occurring so uh, let us consume uh, assume that uh, it is an enzyme membrane so let's draw a membrane suppose it's a membrane and we assume it is of length say from starts 0 and it is of length L and from a distance uh, from a distance at a distance of X let's assume a thin layer a thin slab across which we will study let the thickness of this slab be delta x okay let the thickness be delta x let me write it below this let the thickness be delta x okay So we will uh, assume that substrate is entering from one side. Let us assume that the substrate is entering from this side and leaving from this side. Okay. Consider an enzyme membrane of width L now this is let us assume there's some problem in this model now now this is working fine assume homogeneous distribution of enzyme of enzyme okay isentropic conditions conditions across the particle across the particle or across the membrane where in this case membrane okay. 
let membrane thickness be thickness be capital L now to analyze the effect of internal diffusion restrictions we will uh, assume a small to study idr we will assume a small section assume substrate diffusion across a small section of thickness delta x of thickness delta x the membrane we'll assume this also the membrane has a uniform cross sectional area perpendicular to flow of substrate perpendicular to flow of substrate okay i'll write this within brackets a uh, uniform cross sectional area capital a then at steady state at steady state when i say steady state that means that is no accumulation no accumulation of substrate then at steady state mass balance of substrate at the section at the section will be given by by i'll write in brackets using fick's law similar So what we have done in the spherical geometry case by Fick's law, B S B S upon since we are using x here, we will write D S by D X. This is the substrate gradient, the concentration profile into the cross section area against which it is moving, and this is at x. It is entering at x. We assume that the substrate is entering at x and leaving at x plus delta x so for leaving this will be ds ds upon dx cross section area is similar and the position is x plus delta x and similarly the rate of consumption will be shown by the michaelis menten intrinsic kinetics and this would be cross section at the volume at this place since this is volumetric uh, rate of reaction so this would be the volume of the section this will be volume of the section because this is 
volumetric reaction rate volumetric rate of reaction and since the it is a steady state so this will be equal to zero so this is equation one now dividing this equation one by a delta x dividing equation 1 by the term a into delta x we get we get similar equation as we got in the case of spherical geometry the process is quite similar but the results are a little bit different A delta x, sorry, A would be removed from here because it is divided by A. Add the position x plus delta x whole upon delta x minus Vs equals to 0. This will be our equation 2. Now to obtain a general equation for the whole membrane, uh, we need to assume that this small cross-section area, this uh, this uh, the width of this section is almost negligible because if this is just a simple line, we can integrate this line throughout the length of this membrane throughout the width of this membrane and. Uh, we can thus obtain the complete substrate profile by integrating, integrating it across the length. Okay, so now uh, we will assume this to be the thickness of this um, small section to be negligible. To obtain A general equation equation let us assume delta x tends to zero. Therefore applying applying limits to this equation we will get limit delta x tends to 0 this will become d delta d this will be written as ds upon dx upon delta x minus vs equals to 0. So this equation will become this equation will now become So this equation will now become ds is constant so it can be moved out of the differential term and this would become ddx ddx 
of s okay mm -hmm. dx square s minus vs equals to zero this will be our equation three Now, since again, this is a non-linear term, since Vs equals to Vmax S upon Km plus S is a non-linear term, hence, analytical solution for this simple radical integration is not possible hence simple analytical integration is not possible and to obtain And to obtain dimensionless form, uh, and to obtain other significant uh, numbers, that is the dimensionless numbers, uh, we convert this equation into dimensionless form. So the dimensionless form. Converting equation three into dimensionless form. Now uh, a special term will be introduced here. I'll write in brackets using terms like. Beta is equal to s upon k m, and the other new term introduced here will be z, that will be dimensionless thickness, and it will be represented by x upon l. Now, if you want to convert this equation into a dimensionless form, then substrate needs to be divided by k m. So, to uh, convert this into dimension dimensionless form, we will multiply and divide. This term by km, so we will get a km value here in the numerator, and the denominator km would move in with the substrate, will fit into the substrate uh, concentration, make it dimensionless term as beta. And similarly, multiplying and dividing by l square, we will get dz square, and finally. We will get a capital L term, L square term here. And converting this term again uh, by using Michaelis Menten equation, if we convert this term into dimen dimensionless form, we will be getting V max into beta 1 plus beta. This will be equal to 0. Our fourth equation. As we have done in the spherical, in the case of spherical geometry, dividing equation four by the term, this constant term, d s came upon l square. d s came upon l square. We will approach nearer to the value of scalar modulus. We get V 
Now you can see that this is a shorter equation than the spherical symmetric case. We will get this term will vanish from this side and among this term uh, we will get only d square dz, d dz square of beta left minus now here we will have all the constant terms together v max this would get reciprocated l square upon ds v max l square upon ds m and the rest of the term beta upon 1 plus beta beta upon 1 plus beta equals to 0 this will be our equation 5 now again uh, theorem modulus for flat geometry theorem modulus for this is another topic that can uh, be derived so I'll not be going to the, into the details but uh, what we have obtained from literature is that Thiele modulus for flat geometry is defined as is defined as phi equals to y equals to l under root v max upon ds km i suppose this is similar to what we have obtained in the spherical geometry case l under root v max upon ds km now on squaring both sides similar to what we have done in the spherical geometry case squaring both sides we get phi square l square v max upon V max upon ds dkm. So this is the term similar in equation number 5. V max L square upon ds km. So we can simply replace phi square instead of this term. <coughs> Therefore equation 5 becomes Or can be written as equation 5 can be written as d square or d d beta sorry d dz d dz square of beta minus phi square beta upon 1 plus beta equals to 0. This is our sixth equation. Now here in this case, the equation number 3 and equation number 6, both are non-linear uh, equations and this can be only solved uh, by using computation softwares and these have to be solved numerically considering the following boundary conditions now let's see what the boundary conditions are i'm deliberately not rubbing the first equation because it is one of the end results Again, 
due to non linear nature nature of the Michaelis Menten kinetics equation three and equation six equation six have to be solved solved numerically considering the following boundary conditions considering the following boundary conditions the first condition is the first boundary and it will be at x equals to 0 and here the substrate concentration will be equivalent to the by substrate concentration and the dimensionless width will be 0 at this point and the dimensionless substrate concentration will be equivalent to the bulk dimensionless substrate concentration. The second condition would be x equals to L by 2 that is at the center and this, this is the central position and at this point we will assume that the rate of substrate, the substrate gradient at this point we will assume it to be 0. And in the dimensionless form, these values will correspond to z equals to, sorry, 0 0.5 or 1 by 2. And the dimensionless substrate gradient will also be equal to 0. Now, we have seen both the cases uh, now, the spherical geometry and the flat geometry. In both these cases, the, dim the dimensionless number, uh, the Thiele modulus, can be used to understand the catalytic system. So, in both the cases, a high value of Thiele modulus. So, a high value of Thiele modulus implies that either implies that either either one of the two cases might might be there either V max upon K M is greater than the diffusivity okay that is the reaction is diffusionally limited mass transfer limited because vs is low very low or or it could also imply that that l or R, whatever the case may be, in case of flat geometry, in case of spectral geometry, L or R is large, is too large. That, that is the particle size is large and the system is diffusion limited. So this means that the system is high value implies that mean what Mainly it signifies that the system is diffusionally limited. So in other ways, we can say that if the particle is too large, 
on which we are immobilizing if the particle is too large and a porous one then a high value of theory modulus uh, suggests that the, uh, the system would be diffusionally limited okay and similarly a low value of pi will mean that the system is kinetically limited and the value of either l or r is too small or uh, ds is very much high and vmax upon km are too low now uh, let us see what the effectiveness factor is for flat geometry now we have two types of effectiveness factor since the, uh, the substrate concentration is different throughout the membrane so we have a substrate profile so therefore uh, due to different substrate concentration the rate of reaction will be different hence the effect the observed and the maximum possible reaction rate should be different at each and every point so we will have a, a profile for local effectiveness factor so two types of effectiveness factor are there effectiveness factor we have two types so first is local effectiveness factor and that is similar to the edr and we will obtain the final result in the dimensionless form similar to the edr one and this would be the final result now uh, for flat geometry the global effectiveness factor the global effectiveness factor for flat geometry is again the integral of the effectiveness factor across the whole volume is the integral of the local effectiveness factor over the whole volume of the bicatalyst particle and here it will be given by in case of flat geometry it will be given by 0 to 1 local effectiveness factor across the whole volume a into tz upon the whole volume a into tz now since the cross section area was constant so this term would move out and get cancelled eventually and we will have here the numerator will be 0 to 1 meter dz whole upon 1 minus 0 because there is nothing here now a and a has been cancelled out so uh, we will get the upper limit minus lower limit 1 minus 0 and this would be 1 so our result would be reduced to Meta into d z limit would be from 0 to 1 now similar to the uh, spherical, ge uh, spherical geometry the effectiveness factor is the global effectiveness factor is a strong function of both the modulus as well as the bulk substrate concentration so if the theory modulus is constant for different bulk substrate concentrations we will have different effectiveness factor and hence uh, the effect of EDR, uh, IDR would change with changing substrate concentration even for same geometries thank you and we will further be discussing about the role of deactivation for this uh, immobilization process and for the normal kinetics we will discuss what uh, deactivation means to, for the enzymes 
and before that we will be seeing how to evaluate the intrinsic kinetic parameters if we are using internal diffusion restriction so in our next lecture we will be uh, pointing out few methods that have been used and we will come to a conclusion that what is the best to use for evaluating the intrinsic uh, kinetic parameters and the mass transfer parameters thank you have a nice day